Hi everyone, this particular video is covering Econ 201 sessions 5 and 6 and particularly the component which looks at how a change in the population growth rate will affect the steady state equilibrium level of output per person and the steady state output growth rate in the neoclassical growth theory model. To start, I am going to draw the standard neoclassical growth theory model. So we draw our axes. Remember always to label the axes. So this is capital per person on the horizontal axis and output per person on the vertical axis. We draw in the production function which is positively sloped but concave because of diminishing marginal returns. So as capital per person increases, output per person increases at a decreasing rate. I'm going to draw in the investment requirement line and I'm going to label it N1 plus DK because the parameter which I'm going to be changing is the population growth rate. So N1 is now going to refer to the original population growth rate and N2, which we will draw in in a second, will refer to the new population growth rate. Remember the investment requirement line shows how much investment will be needed or required to keep or maintain the capital to labor ratio at a particular level. The higher the capital to labor ratio, the more investment is needed to keep that capital to labor ratio constant. And the lower the capital to labor ratio, the less investment per person would be needed to keep that lower capital to labor ratio constant. I'm then drawing in the savings function. And that savings function shows the amount of savings per person that is generated at each level of output per person. The savings function depends on the savings rate. It's assumed we save a constant portion of our output per person, but because output per person increases at a decreasing rate, savings per person also increases at a decreasing rate. The savings function lies below the production function because we don't save all of the output or income per person that is generated, some of it is consumed. To show the original steady state, the original steady state is going to occur where savings per person being generated is exactly equal to the amount of investment required to maintain the capital to labor ratio at that particular level. So when the capital to labor ratio is K star, the amount of investment per person needed, I'm not going to draw it in, but it would be I star, would be needed to keep that capital to labor ratio constant. And that is exactly equal to the amount of savings per person being generated when output per person is Y star. So the steady state equilibrium is at A. Just note that in steady state, the reason why it's a steady state is because investment per person is equal to savings per person. And furthermore, that means that there is no further change in either output per person or capital per person once that steady state is reached. We now consider what would happen if there was an increase in the population growth rate. I'm specifically working through an increase, but in your own time, please go through and figure out how a decrease in the population growth rate could affect this model. For now though, I'm dealing with an increase in the population growth rate. An increase in the population growth rate would mean that even more investment would be required to keep the capital to labor ratios at whatever level they are constant. So when the population growth rate increases, we need to demonstrate that more investment is going to be needed than before. And to do that, and to demonstrate that, we show it as an upward pivot of the investment requirement line. Note how the labeling of that line changes. The new population growth rate is going to be N2. The depreciation rate of capital hasn't changed, so that's still D. And so the new investment requirement line is N2 plus DK. So what we have is an increase in the population growth rate, specifically such that the new population growth rate 
is greater than the old population growth rate. What we can see, and we will talk through how we get to this in a second, but what becomes immediately obvious is that because of this increase in the population growth rate, once the economy has adjusted, a new steady state is going to be reached at, say, point B. We note that the capital to labor ratio at point B is lower than before, and the level of output per person associated with that capital to labor ratio is also lower than before. So this new steady state equilibrium at point B is where the new investment requirement line intersects the original savings function. It allows us to determine the new steady state level of capital stock per person and the new steady state level of output per person. Note that at point B in steady state, the change in output per person would equal the change in capital stock per person and once again that equals zero. So at both point A and at point B, those are both steady states. At those steady states, in both cases, investment required is equal to savings being generated. But at point B, the difference is that the population growth rate is lower than at point A. And the consequence of that is that the, sorry, that the population growth rate is higher than at point A. And the consequence of a higher population growth rate is that output per person in the new steady state is lower than at the old steady state because capital stock per person at the new steady state is lower than at the old steady state. The thing to then try and understand first is how that new steady state is reached. Why does an increase in the population growth rate lead to lower levels of capital stock per person and why does output per person decline? Well, the way to do that is to think about at the original steady state, once the population growth rate increases, what happens to savings um, being generated and what happens to the amount of investment required. And what becomes relatively clear is that at the original steady state, A, the amount of investment required, I star, would be equal to the amount of savings being generated, S star. But when the population growth rate increases, so the problem with point A prime is that when the population growth rate increases, the amount of investment per person needed to maintain the capital to labor ratio at K star is now going to be much greater than the amount of savings being generated at that point. So because here the amount of investment needed per person is greater than the amount of savings being generated per person, you basically have a situation where firms would be demanding um, money to invest, but those funds are simply not available for them to access. So there is more investment needed than savings available to access. And if that happens, firms will not be able to continue to invest. They will have to cut back on the amount of investment that they undertake. And as we know, if investment declines, then the capital to labor ratio will start to decline. As the capital to labor ratio declines, output per person will decline. As output per person declines, the amount of savings being generated per person will decline. But in addition, as output per person declines, and as savings per person declines, because the capital to labor ratio is decreasing, at those lower levels of the capital to labor ratio, the amount of investment needed to maintain the lower capital to labor ratios is also decreasing. You don't need as much investment per person anymore to maintain capital to labor ratios which are getting smaller. Eventually, at point B, we reach the new steady state. And at that new steady state, the amount of investment per person being generated is exact, I mean, the amount of investment per person required is exactly equal to the amount of savings per person being generated. And as a consequence, at that new steady state, the um, change in the amount of output per person will remain at zero.
and the change in the amount of capital stock per person will also remain at zero. So it's a steady state because there is no further changes in output per person or capital per person once that steady state is reached. So what can we take away from this so far? Well, there are two things. The first thing is that an increase in the population growth rate will lower the steady state level of output per person and it will also lower the steady state level of capital per person. Lowering the steady state level of output per person basically means can't believe this. Hello?